Right? After Peter has spilled the bean to me, tell him that he's going to go kill somebody? I don't think so. I don't think I would have made it out of my driveway. So I had to play. Mike Mordica was desperate to get out of the country, but he needed a phony passport fast. He trusted Deladone to find him one. I get the phone call around 9.30. Mike said, we're at California Views. Come and pick me up. Bring the passport. So I had the passport already done for him, for him to leave. With Modica's passport in his hand and the assassins in his rearview mirror, Deladonna drove out to the sandwich shop where Mike Modica was waiting. At about the same time, a mother and her 15-year-old daughter were passing that same restaurant. We had had an early dinner because I was rushing around that day and I just looked over and I saw her favorite sandwich shop. Louise Russo had just picked up the youngest of her three children from Air Cadets and decided to run in and grab some takeout. Okay, I said, well, lock the doors and I'll just be a minute. And she's just listening to some music. And, um, that's the last I said to her. As I walked in, I placed my order and I noticed a group of men in the corner at the distance. At that very moment, Rafael Deladone was coming in to meet one of those men, Mike Modica. The plan was to snatch him, take him away, and kill him. When I walked into the restaurant, there was four guys just leaving. They were hesitating to leave and not to leave, talking while they're leaving. So they took a couple of minutes to get off from the chair and start walking on the outside. Those four guys were civilians who had nothing to do with the mob. They were talking in the shadows but they were standing right next to Mike Modica's car. So when the shooters drove up, they panicked, afraid their target was going to get away. They started shooting towards these innocent people that had nothing to do with it. They were just there to eat a sandwich. The shooters made a big mistake. The four men ran away, but the bullets kept flying. And then all of a sudden I hear the strangest sound and I, I thought somebody hit my car. And I says, oh my God, my daughter is Krista's in the car. Tables were flying, glass was flying everywhere. I mean, if you didn't get hit by a bullet, you got hit by glass. And I remember turning around and all of a sudden I felt my hair move and it just kind of went. And, I, and there were just things, and I realized there were bullets and I said, oh my God. They were just going over my head like this. The one that I remember moving my hair was like this. And I thought, oh my God, I said, I got to get down. But this is like seconds. We're talking seconds here. In the midst of the chaos, Louise Russo got hit. I found myself on the ground and I felt the ice cold cement floor. And I was so worried about Chris and my mind just kept going to her. And I tried to pull myself along the ground couldn't do it and I just I was just kept saying somebody please help me please help me I was right next to her I must have been maybe three feet away from her so I kind of crawled towards her to see if she was okay and she was just saying to me please please don't hurt my daughter and I couldn't see his face because I couldn't turn but I saw him wearing something blue and and he says to me are you all right are you all right she was stunned I mean she was afraid frozen his voice, I'll never forget his voice. And he just repeated over and over, are you okay, are you okay? And at one point, I was getting upset inside. I'm thinking, what do you mean, am I okay? I'm bleeding, I can't move. I don't know if my little girl's fine. I just started calling out her name, Krista, Krista, Krista. And all of a sudden he said to me, is this your daughter? And I, I looked up and I saw her walk in. It was very hard. It was so hard because you're trying to reach your child and you can't. And you don't know if she's harmed or not. And she, she looked at me, she walks in and she said, Mommy! Nothing had gone according to plan. Mike Modica escaped and the bullet meant for him got an innocent bystander instead. 36 rounds of ammunition had ripped the place apart. People could have been killed including Rafael Deladonna.
Were you panicking? Were you I frightened? I was shaking you... because Mike had a gun pointed at me. And at that point, you figure the first person who's going to whack is me. You're walking in here to whack me. That's the impression I had given him. So I had to play a role that at the time that I don't even know how I got the strength to do it. The words came out right. The, the expression was right. He believed, he believed me. He left. He ran by the back door. You brought them to I the brought man them they there. Wanted. They were going to whack him regardless of me helping them or not helping them. But you understood what you were setting him up for. Yes. But they were not going to kill him that night. They were not going to shoot in that restaurant. I mean, if they did, if I knew about it, I wouldn't have walked in. Louise Russo was rushed to hospital. Bullet fragments lodged in her spine. She would never walk again. The city was shocked. Toronto doesn't see gangland drive-bys. And there was not one solid lead. Police had nothing to go on. Two of the officers called in to assist in the investigation were Bill Chiamarella and Tony Saldudo. Their beat is organized crime, but nothing about this looked like a mafia hit. Drive-by shooting? I mean, gangland style? Like, that's not... You know, you can say that's not the way the, the, the Italians do it, or the way the mafia does it, or whatever, but usually that's not the way it's done. That's really, really silly and really stupid to be doing something like this out in the middle of the street. I mean, it's crazy. They couldn't figure it out. No clues, no witnesses. This case was not going to be solved. The cops didn't know it then, but they were about to catch a very big break. Rafael Della Donna realized he had been an expendable pawn in this hit. I figured out that night that I was set up. They used me, basically. When I realized that I caught the play and I knew that that's what had happened, I had to make a choice. First reaction was for me to kill them. At that point, at that night, I would have did it. I mean, you want to kill one person, you want to kill one scumbag, you go do it. You don't just go kill people that have lives, families. You know, it's just not right. So you, you fight the war soldiers to soldiers, not civilians to soldiers. So you suddenly realized, I suddenly realized everything you're doing is wrong. Everything was a play. It was all, it was all, I was manipulated. That's when he took his story to police. Deladonna the con was going to become Raphael the rat. He came forward to us. Saying what? That he didn't like what happened that night. Because that could have been him on the floor and not Mrs. Russo. He took it personally. He did. At that point, you, you have to make a choice. You know, you're going to still be bad boy or you're going to become a good boy. Yeah, but in that world, you are a snitch. You're a I'm snitch, a rat. A rat, so. Yes. I'd rather be a rat. Because my sentence was to die that night. And I didn't die. Instead, he spilled his guts about everyone involved in the sandwich shop shooting. This is Paris. He's, uh, he's an H.A. sergeant of arms. Hell's uh, Angels? Hell's Angels. And he's the shooter. Huh. Very dangerous. And, yeah, he looks pretty dangerous too. This is Mark, known as the Jew. We call him Mark the Jew. He's an associate of the bikers. I don't think he's got colors, but he is an associate. He was the driver that night of the shooting. And supposedly he's the one that gave the order to shoot that night. Mm -hmm. So I guess he was in command that night. And? Anthony Borelli. He was the one in the passenger seat. The, the last person that shot, the three shots, was him. He's an uh, old friend that I grew up with, that he has grown up in my family, like a brother figure, basically. He liked the fast life. He liked the soprano life. The soprano life. Yes. Is it like the Sopranos? Well, I think it's worse. I think the Sopranos, they make it look good on TV because it's TV. Real life is real drama. Sopranos, people die. But then after the show, they're back alive. In real life, when you die, you're dead. When Rafael Della Donna set a man up to die in a botched mafia hit, he learned his life meant nothing to the mob. I was already a dead man when I got to the restaurant. 
Right? I was already sentenced to death. That's why Deladonna became a rat. He went to police with the name of the intended target, Mike Modica, and the man who ordered the hit, Peter Scarcella. But veteran cop Tony Salduto's first reaction to him was, who is this guy? Okay, we're looking at this Raffaele guy who's a con man, who's a street thug and everything, and he's going to give us problems. We know he's going to give us problems because to be able to control somebody like that, it's extremely difficult for a police handler. It's extremely difficult. Then you look at the other end of it. Okay, 20 years we've been chasing Peter, and we now find this guy, Modica, who's a loose cannon, and we have bikers that are involved in shooting, and an innocent victim that is paralyzed. We have to. Who has no choice? Toronto police and the RCMP built a special unit around Deladonna. They wired him with a state-of-the-art microphone, able to transmit from great distances. He was their agent now. But he had to bury his anger to get Scarcella to trust him. In order for me to get close to him, I had to become like them. I had to walk the talk, walk the walk, talk the talk. At that point, I said to myself, you're just like everybody else. And I had to just be quiet, swallow my pride, and smile. Well, I, inside of me, there was no smile, but I had to smile, pretend to be somebody that I wasn't, you know? And it wasn't easy staying with them 13 months, knowing that these guys were going to whack you at any second. My enemies pretending to be my friends, and me pretended to be their friends. It's a lot of pretending. Yeah, it was all an act. We had to act. They were acting, I had to act. Just, I had to feed back the same thing they were feeding me. And I said to myself at the end, the best man win. This was a perfect scenario. Let's get him in there. I mean, you have to try to get the, the confidence of a person like Peter Scarcella. Peter Scarcella is just not going to associate with anybody or work with anybody. I mean, he, he's he hasn't been, he hadn't been to for 25 years because he was smart. Knowing the way Raffaele is and the way he understands the Italians and the way he understands the old regime, Peter would love that. When they'd meet at the boss's favorite hangouts, Deladonna knew how to talk to Peter Scarcella and understood how he felt about Mike Modica muscling in on his territory. But Deladonna had a personal stake in this too. I had every right to talk about it. I was mad. I was mad that he had promised me 